Okay, so an interesting story before we begin this new episode. For the past few days, I've been trying to get a brand new microphone, which explains the lack of content lately. Finally, the stimulus check came in, thank God, and I decided to invest. And I decided to get an XLR microphone, specifically the Shear SM7B, aka the one that most podcasters use nowadays. But since my PC doesn't have anything to plug into, I had to get an audio interface as well. The best one I found is a Focusrate Scarlett audio interface. I got the mic, but like a dumbass, I got the 2i2 instead of the Solo. Whoops. So throughout this episode, if you're wearing headphones, you will hear audio coming from the left ear instead of both of your ears, and the volume is a bit low. I apologize for the inconvenience, and I will continue to use the microphone that I'm recording with right now, the Fine Fine, until the Solo Scarlett interface arrives within a month. Again, I apologize for the issue, and I'll make sure that'll never happen again. And with that, let's get on with the episode. Let it be known that I do not condone any violence on the crippled and disabled. I always sympathize with them, no matter what it is. This man, when he was a kid, did the complete opposite. And he kind of asked what was coming to him. Sonic review series where I can review anything but not everything. On this show, I cover any piece of entertainment, whether it be various tokusatsu films, Japanese or otherwise, and anime shows and movies. This week is episode 54, Social Redemption, my review of A Silent Voice, the movie. On November 19th, 2014, right when its last chapter of the manga was released, an anime annotation was announced. On December 17th, it was decided to be a theatrical film. Then on October 14, 2015, in the weekly Shonen Magazine, it was announced that Naoko Yamada and Kyoto Animation were chosen to bring the manga into the animation. Let me give you a little background on the animation studio itself. Forty years ago in 1981, Kyoto Animation was founded by Yoko and Hideaki Hata, respectively. It went from a limited company to a corporation in the coming years. In the 21st century, Kyoeni, that's his nickname, is known for its high production values and, quote, sensitivity to the wonders and quandaries, quandaries, excuse me, of ordinary life. Now, you might be wondering, how is that possible? Well, let me explain. You see, Japan, in terms of its work environment, is completely filled with overworking individuals that, on a rare occasion, would lead to their literal deaths. There is a word for that, and it's called karoshi, meaning death by overworking, and I'm not making that one up. When Kyoeni saw that trend, they simply said, fuck that noise, because unlike most animation studios in Japan, they actually pay the animators rather than freelance workers, and they treat employees res- respectively and positively. They encourage said employees to focus on the frame quality over any typical quota, which is why Kyoto Animation was chosen along with the director for this project. And so... With that in mind, on September 17th, 2016, a silent voice premiered in 120 Japanese theaters, and it underperformed, sadly. But despite that, it received overwhelmingly positive reviews. Even the director of Your Name, Makoto Shinkai, called the film a fantastic piece of work. How nice of him. And during its run, the film also premiered in Singapore, Malaysia, Australia, New Zealand, distributed by Viz Media Europe, and all of Europe and Russia excluding the UK and Ireland, sorry mates, and everywhere else. On June 5th, 2019, the film was finally released on the streaming platform called Netflix. 
and I think it's pretty self-explanatory what Netflix is, so I won't get into it. And that's how I managed to watch the film. Needless to say, I needed another bucket for my tears. So let's get into it, yeah? Now, just like the last episode, this is a non-spoiler review. So let me give you a little plot synopsis. When a grade school student with impaired hearing is bullied mercilessly, she transfers to another school. Years later, one of her former tormentors sets out to make amends. But even he has many problems with social anxiety, trying to overcome that as well, with some minor setbacks. With that out of the way, let's get into my final thoughts. There is a feeling within this movie that really spoke out to me. The story is all about this young man seeking a way to redeem himself after what he did, but can't because he was one of the bullies. That hit home for me because I was too a bully when I was young, but upon growing older, I made amends to the people I've done it to. It's the exact same here. The only problem is he developed social anxiety, but throughout the film, he finds a way to overcome it. The characters are imperfect human beings that have done horrible things to this one girl. And even she isn't perfect. But that's the point of it. Okay, let's be honest. We as a human race are all flawed that always make mistakes. Am I wrong? And I wish the timing wasn't perfect in this day and age. With that said, they're fantastic. The characters in this movie are fantastic. They all bounce off each other so nicely. Even the one female character, who I call the C-U-N-T by the by, is surprisingly enjoyable. The supporting guys are also great too. The voice acting in Japanese and English are top notch. The Japanese voice acting is self-explanatory. Not much else to say there. But the English voice acting is surprisingly good and great at points. If you are wondering why Shoko, the main female, this sounds odd in the English dub, is because she's deaf by an actual deaf voice actress, Lexi Calden. And it's extremely accurate. Why? Because at my job, I actually work with a deaf co-worker. It's exactly that. Kyoto Animation never fails to impress me with its animation. <sighs> Which brings me even more grief because on July 18th, 2019, a certain ill-minded dickhead committed arson by burning the headquarters and killing over 30 workers. Thankfully, the studio has recovered, but that incident is still within the anime community's minds. And for the guy that did it, he can, well, ironically, burn in hell for all of eternity. I just bought the microphone. Oops. Anyhow, the animation in this movie is beautiful, even on my 4K UHD TV with home theater. Not a single frame is wasted. Another thing that is amazing is the soundtrack. Those piano pieces are soothing to the ears. And it's too bad I can't play them for you because of copyright reasons. But you should look them up on YouTube. It's beautiful. Overall, A Silent Voice is without a doubt one of KyoAni's best works. No complaints found here whatsoever, so with that in mind, the movie earns the rare perfect score of 100 bullies turned good out of 100. A must watch indeed. And so, two more series left to go before Godzilla's singular point. With that said, we're heading into the realm of Battle Shonen. In particular, we're taking a look at a series that is very influential, spanning countless amounts of memes, in jokes, and references. Uh, good grief, this is going to be really bizarre in this adventure. If you'd like to see the previous episode, then a pop-up will show up right here. Thank you all for watching and your support. If you're new to the channel, then hit the subscribe button and ring the bell for notifications. This has been Dimitri signing off, and until next time, I'll be punching somebody to death with my stand. Have a good day, everyone.